Okay, so welcome everybody to the July Koha US Web Dev SIG. We also call it the What's George Eating SIG, I think. He changed the name last time, but he's not here, so we don't know what he's eating. So we're just having a little chat. So Avery was talking about um, wanting to know more about how you could change things like on your uh, staff interface home page and how you could make some you know html changes and stuff like that um so i'm gonna see if i can share my screen and i have so many tabs open so give me a moment Can you see it? Yes. So there are places uh, in tools, um, a couple of places that you can do things. This one is the HTML customizations. And um, I think most of ours happen to be OPAC things, but you can go in here and do um, a new entry and choose the location um, of where things occur. Are those, mine not show all OPEC stuff. Is it always all OPEC stuff, Jason, or is there? I think a lot of the staff client stuff yeah. is still in the system preferences. So if you go mm -hmm. over to the system preferences and click on staff, there are different um, HTML sys profs still, I think, for the staff client. For the OPAC, it is pretty much all in there. Well, and there section. are there are also, before I leave this page under news, mm. um, there are some things that you can um, do. Like we have those two, um, you know, it's just some HTML. Those two things in our staff interface, we have some quick links um, so people can get to some canned um, URLs without having to think of which report number am I supposed to go find or whatever. And then we put some links to our, our test site um, just so people didn't have to remember what that URL was also, just some, you know, some quick things and that was done from the um, news um, right here under tools. And then we haven't done a lot, but with pages, um, you can create new actual, keep clicking on that down arrow, you okay. can create actual an actual new page and it will get a, um, you know, a whole new URL. In fact, we've done that. Let me see if I can move this thing so I can see. I've been playing around with that and, and I created the pages and then I put some links here. So we were playing around with what could we give staff as kind of a centralized place of where they could go for things. So we were playing around with that idea and, you know, youth death, youth desk things where they could get to things quickly. Um, so that's another area. And then let me go back to Jason said, a lot of those are still in staff interface. So you've got um, intranet main user block, which I guess we don't have anything in that one, but you could enter um, HTML um, there. Yeah, so there's a system preference for like each sort of home page. So that the, the main user block is your, your main home page. Um, then there's one for the reports home, one for the circ home, I think. 
that, that may be it so far. And there's an internet nav, which on ours. Well, actually, I'm going to show you there. But anyway, on that one, we those things appear up here at the top. And we added um, a drop down with yet more links of things for people to get to. And um, we run certain monthly reports. We didn't want to go find those reports every single time. So yeah. we put links. So that's where, if you use that internet nav, those things would appear up here. And yeah, the monthly reports is another thing that we keep getting asked to make make it more net, you know, easy to find. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to figure out a way that, you know, looks nice and is also easy to access. So you said there's one for reports, Jason. Yeah, yeah, right under that one. Yeah. Internet reports home, which apparently I was going to try and use that for like some of my cheats for I cannot remember how to do this in a report. So I like it was like, if I need a date range picker, uh, this is how you could put it in. And but I haven't really used that. Um and then your internet user CSS is where you could go and change. Um, you know, I want to make this button blue instead of green, or I want to change, you know, make my font bigger, or I want to move this, you know, let me get padding to this box or whatever. And then there's the internet user JS for the jQuery for different things. And that's all Jason stuff right there. I can tell right from the beginning, looking at that. <laughs> um, so does that give you some some places to kind of know? Yeah, yeah, that's super helpful. Of... Yeah, thank you. It's, it's one of those things that like I looked for it on my own and could not find it. And then as soon as someone points it out, it's like, oh, <laughs> well, I that remember, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I remember in the very beginning just being stuck in all these system preferences there are so many of them and then I would use one and then I'd want to find it again but I couldn't remember what it was called and I would try keywords to find it but that's not what it was and it it takes a while to really get used to where things are and I still some of them I, I'm like I can't find the thing I'm looking for so yeah Yeah, thank you. We've also finally stopped getting, um, at first we were getting so many uh, requests from staff. Of like, can you make this button bigger? Can you change this font to this? And it, you know, just, they were very running with the customized idea, the open, um, oh, what's the word? Um, not open, open source thing, you know, they were like, oh, we could change anything. So those report, or, you know, those requests have kind of stopped but I think this kind of, this helps me feel a little bit better that I can actually maybe try mm -hmm. if there's a, another request that comes in that's a little bit more, you know, doable. <laughs> so what, what all is involved in, in your role? Yeah, so I help, um, I do technical support. So Brendan, who was at the last meeting um, is our, technical services. Um, I'm probably butchering his um, role, but yeah, so I work with him. So we do a lot of like the, you know, just the background tech stuff, um, but also with doing something that's open source like Koha, we're also kind of trying to figure out where our roles are with like, you know, updating the website, you know, things like that. Um, making all these reports in SQL and Koha. So those kind of new job um, tasks that we didn't have before in Sierra, we're kind of adapting to while also just doing like regular tech support kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting with like a consortium while our office works from home. You know, like I said, we can't like recreate too many issues, but it's also, I think Koha is really nice that we can kind of like 
really see why things are happening and where it's coming from with Sierra I never felt like I could figure it out ever so right um I can show sorry that's a little feedback there um show our system like you, you said reports like oh, yeah. report navigation that sort of oh. thing so I've done a few things on that uh, Let's step aside for just a moment okay um so oh I was gonna just highlight this for the recording and for your information um in the Koha US demo server George has gone through um and pointed out like the internet nav sysprev controls this uh, if you go over to circulation internet circulation controls that um and reports so that's just a and he doesn't have one on the front page anymore but that front page there is one like a block that affects that too uh so on our system one thing i've done is pulled out circulation oh goody that's broken uh <laughs> So, so what I get for trying to do stuff when I'm tired. Um, broken out circulation, I can show you on our test server because I think it's not broken there, which I made pink so that I don't mess up and like start making changes on the, the real thing. Um, <laughs> I've got this little circ issue tracker and what it's doing is like actually running the reports, giving numbers, and then the numbers are clickable for different cases that's cool. so people don't have to go through and like dig through because I've got like 800 reports now <laughs> so like yeah. it's, a, it's really cumbersome to go through so I've tried to like make it human friendly basically um so there's there's different and I've colored the ones red that involve other libraries because we are a consortium um so that's one thing I've done to make it a little more easy to to do reporting on the like monthly statistic reports another thing i did was just i blew up the canned reports we had a little like vigil for them there was a candle <laughs> and like the sad song playing and they disappeared and then we put in some of our custom reports here so like um most of my libraries use this uh circulation report for their monthly board reports um so it's it's just quick and easy and still in the place that it was designed to be. <laughs> um, so, so that's a, those are a few things. Other than that, it's just a mess in the, in the reports area. Um, yeah, ours is, yeah. we're having a hard time um, designating like ones that are just for clamps, like central staff and like, don't mm -hmm. touch these. These are just for us. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know if we can make them like, bright red or something but yeah yeah and you can that's something that um you can do but it requires a little code is you mm -hmm. can put html in these notes fields and then it'll render so i went back when i tried to organize things i started putting little tips and function notes and things like that um to help with some of that and then we use the categories to to sort of filter things out but it's still a big mess and a big project that I need to work on yeah um, those those function things and tips are really cool that helps just break it up because it's just really it's just a lot of text to look at yeah and it's hard to designate you know what you're actually reading I'm gonna undo a bunch of stuff over here real fast that tracker is really cool though I do like the idea of um trying to automate some things you know, just to make people's daily lives a little bit better. Yeah. That's and such a like, cool idea. The other way, like before we did it that way, I had the, I have a cleanup reports page that was doing the same thing, but we found that people are more likely to be reactive if there's a number. Um, same thing with like the holds queue. I added the count there because uh, I have libraries that won't run it they get in the habit of not running it because there's nothing on it and then something mm. will come up on it so um just trying to give more more awareness that hey there's something to do there um I also did that on the front page um moving the action box from down here up here just to try and make it more apparent if they need 
to do stuff when they first log in. Um, oh, I don't think my my thing on broke, did it? Okay. Um, what else? What? Barbara's back. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> I think that's that was what I was going to show. Are there other questions or things? Oh, I guess I put this up here too. This is just for certain staff um, for our club holds reports. So that's another different kind of way to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, and I was going to show this. This is my favorite picture that I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> So like, this is just the, what is HTML? What is yeah, this JavaScript? So like the shark is built with HTML. And then if you put makeup on the shark, it's CSS. So that's mm. like cosmetic changes. And then if you teach him how to ride a, a skateboard, you have to use JavaScript <laughs> to do that. So um, yeah, that's my, my fun overusing analogy there. Excellent very understandable for someone who's like what are all these things I don't understand them that yeah I thought I, yeah. Yeah, I thought I would share since that was our sort of overarching topic so far <laughs> um and it's a shark <laughs> always I wonder what I did to break my thing though I'm worried about that now it still works I think the styling is just off so one thing, oh, I was going to ask you, Barbara, on, <laughs> let me share my screen again. The, when you do a patron search, I guess you've only got one branch, don't you? Yeah. So like, if I do a patron search, it highlights the, the logged in branch. But if I do it over here now, it doesn't seem to do that anymore. Like it did that before, right? I don't know because probably sure, because highlighted. <laughs> we're just one branch. And then on the patron search, I actually got rid of the name of the library simply because we're a single site. And so having that extra information is kind of like what we know. You know, I always say it's like for us, it's well, we know where we are. We don't need to keep having a, it told to us that we're at Bedford Public Library. So I tend to remove a lot of that just for, you know, visual, being able to get to things quickly and not having to look at extra information that doesn't mean anything for us. So yeah. I'm not sure if it did that in the other. I think they changed the class up here, but didn't change it down there. I've been fighting with that to try and, and I think that's whatever I broke on the other thing is, <laughs> oh, it's in the, hold on. Um, oh, I don't know, I'll fight with it later. Um, I was trying to think of other stuff that I've done. So I, like, I made a few <laughs> extra changes with the upgrade. We were having an issue with the um, this report hitting a 500 error. So I swapped that out with just a canned report. That's not the 500 error. Um, so that tells me something else is not working there as well. My problem is I've been doing like changes in this in the um, JavaScript system preference in probably three different tabs. Mm -hmm. So I think I've overwritten some of it um, as I've been trying to hurry and fix the things that people tell me about. Yeah, so um, that takes you to a canned report. And one thing that I added was this little no results found message if the table's empty, because that causes people confusion um, whenever it's just the table headings. So that was a recent project. Um, that is, that's good because I'm testing out some reports right now and 
you know, I'm not getting any results. And so I'm kind of like, well, you know, I know that my report is wrong, but for later, yeah, it would be helpful to know that it's not that it's the report is bad. It's just that there don't happen to be any results for your range of dates or whatever. All right. Um, we did okay. some additional things for just our own. Um, I'll share it just briefly. We make use of color a lot to make things stand out for us. So we use Z39 a lot. So we just, you know, these would all be the same, you know, but for us, it was like using color and the weight of the font helps draw our eyes to some things. So we've done a lot of things like that. Um, and we normally use the advanced, but I had to clear my cache today, so. So, and like we use macros. So instead of, you know, hunting through all of this, it's like, there's my macros button. I can get to it really quickly. Um, I don't think I've done anything. Well, we did this to make um, fields that we wanted to highlight that, you know, you really should be like they're required, you know. Uh -huh. And then we made all the boxes the same lengths because for me, my eyes traveling down the page back and forth just causes visual issues for me. And so um, we've done things like that just to, to help our staff, um, you know, efficiently find things. And so we've had a lot of color changes, I guess. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else. Um, let's see. This little icon thing was something that Christopher Brannon from Coeur d'Alene Public Library um, did um, to help, you know, with what format, and we liked that, so we went ahead and added that to our our images. Um, and there's some more colors. <laughs> so that there, there's an awful lot you can do um, you know if somebody does need font to be larger or a button to be highlighted in a different color you really really can go in and do those things yeah that's good to know too because it's it's from someone who's not super knowledgeable or has a ton of experience with like javascript and editing websites i have like a little bit with html but it's hard to tell like what you can and can't touch but it sounds like you could basically change pretty much anything so yeah there, there's places where it's easy and places where it's not as easy but yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much like one of the like sort of breakthrough if, if any things I had like um all, over the years was like it's just like you're going up levels like oh mm -hmm. I can I can change a few things on the surface with CSS Oh, I can change functionality with JavaScript. Oh, I can actually bring things onto the page with the APIs. Like, like it's just kind of climbing up that ladder and realizing the possibilities really are endless. Like, it is an infinitely configurable software, um, which is super cool. And that's why I think yeah. it rocks. Yeah. That was my presentation. <laughs> this is, that's what the shark was, and it was like Koala Rocks, and it was just a list of all the things that Koala lets me do because I can and I want to. Um, and, we, and we've also changed the names of things. So like we're right now, we're testing out the POS um, system, and the staff was freaked out by 
um, the word cash up because that's how it's uh, termed in there. And so um, we changed that, I think, to reconcile, which was something that they could deal with because sometimes it's, it's so funny how it's like, you want to tell them, you know, just, just get, just get used to the fact that this is called cash up, but that was like a blocker and they weren't going to get further because that just did yeah. not exist to them. But so you can actually go in and change wording, you know, if it's something that will help your staff relate, um, so that, that's been another great thing that I, I've learned over the years by watching Jason and George and Christopher and Lucas and all these other people that, you know, knew how to do these things. And, and then I was able to actually, you know, like take their code and sort of substitute what I wanted and, and do it myself. Thank you. This was really, this was really nice. Thank you. <laughs> I feel more confident now. Do you have a test server? No, I can't remember if we put it. I feel like we asked, but I don't know if we have a ticket in for that. So I'll have to double check because I do think that would be really helpful. I have found that invaluable. Yeah. Because um, trying to do things and test things like outside of business hours is really tough. And then if you really screw something up, you can really screw something up. And yeah. then it's, it's like, okay, what have I done? You know? And so being able to do it over in the test environment um, has been great. Even sometimes doing stuff on Bywaters demo or um, creating a sandbox and doing something, you know, not on your production site um, can be helpful just because you're not touching, you know, live operations. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we didn't have one for the longest time. I actually, I spun up a call instance on that junker computer back there and that was my test server, but um, <laughs> having your real data is really helpful. I mean, like, I could have probably pulled and loaded that into the test server. It's just, it's not quite the same as having it hosted by Bywater, having the exact same environment. Yeah. Um, and we found a lot of value in like training and um, we use it for our, our, we sort of require them to have cataloging training from us. We have a niche class set up where they can go in and do some stuff in the test server. And then we can check and see if they're cataloging up to our standards before we give them permissions to do it on the live server. So um, yeah. that was one of our justifications and that's been working out really well. Um, also for like upgrades, it's great because we can see exactly how the custom code is gonna behave beforehand, change things if you catch them. <laughs> yeah. Some of the stuff I haven't caught, um, but and yet, there, and yet there have been times where I, I'm like, well, I have the same JavaScript and I have the same CSS and, you know, I've got the system preferences and yet somehow it was working on the test server and then it doesn't work on the live. And I'm like, I'm not sure what happened, but I mean, usually that's not the case, but every once in a while it'll be like, I don't know what's different about these, but something, you know. Most of the time for me, it's just my brain, like that search tracker thing. I fixed it. Let me show you what it is. <laughs> um, While you were talking. Yeah. So like I I, I had forgotten because I've been working on this for a few months that I'd switched this to bootstrap tabs instead of a, a just a plain old JavaScript thing. So it was actually the code in this box that builds out the HTML that was wrong. So once I've um, pasted that in, my tabs are working just fine again. So, and then those are all based off reports. Yeah, all those numbers pull. So I've got one big report that generates the numbers, and it's nasty, really, because <laughs> it's running every single one of those reports to get a count off of it um, to fill in that tracker, and then um, it builds the link to the report onto the, the number. So you click it and it takes you to the actual report that those numbers are associated with. Um, and I'm, and 
I want to do more of that, more of those little dashboards. Like we've got uh, cataloging reports that they should be running every month. Like if they've got bad barcodes or if they've got too many spaces in their call numbers, um, that sort of stuff could easily go into a dashboard on the circulate or the cataloging homepage. So, and then I want to do like a more hardy kind of stats dashboard that's live. Uh, um, since we can limit it by branch logs and branch code, right? That that one is um, the circ tracker is. So like I could give them those monthly stats and stuff just there. Like this is last month's stats on the page instead of having to have them run things. So that's on my long range plan for the year, I think. <laughs> Anything else we want to talk about? Or should we let Jason go home and <laughs> before I break anything else? <laughs> get some rest. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think if I had my little so I this is my approach. Let me show you guys this brilliance. So since I wasn't keeping very good track of the changes that I made to the test server. I just pull out the old code and put it in Notepad plus plus and then put the new code in and looked at the difference between the two to figure out what I needed to copy over. Um, but one thing I forgot I did, which is fun on the test server is um, we used it for some upgrade training. So I had people go in and like test and things and we had webinars. Um, so I add a little Easter egg to our test server. This is on our test server. The, the nasty pink one is our test server. Um, so it would do different things if they found certain records. So that's another fun thing you can do with jQuery and CSS. Um, so I set it to have different keywords that did different things. That's um, cool. <laughs> Melting <yeah>. chocolate. <laughs> so... So if it's got chocolate in the keyword, it puts this melting gift there. If it's got cookies, it does the cookie confetti. Um, I have sounds too. They probably won't play and they're really loud because I didn't share my sound, but like it'll play the Jaws theme if you bring up a shark record uh, or like the Tetris theme if you bring up the Tetris book um, <laughs> and crickets. That's awesome. I yeah. finally got my cricket sounds built in. So if I ever need crickets, I just type in crickets and pull up the record and it starts playing cricket sounds. So <laughs> but there's another idea for you. Gaming, gamification of training via the web dev group. You're welcome world. <laughs> No, you're going to have all these things done by the next meeting, right, Avery? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all I wrap this month. Um, I'll just, I'll put a plug in, Avery, for the conference. It's like a great place to get these sorts of ideas oh, as yeah. well. Uh, and the workshop days are a great time to just sit down with people mm -hmm. and kind of get more familiar with, with how that sort of stuff works. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm selfishly glad it's it's a little local to us, so. <laughs> oh yeah, it was just a couple, it was an hour north of me last year and I was so thankful. <laughs> I just had to drive up there. So yeah, yeah. That. this year's gonna be an adventure. I always have travel adventures. <laughs> which my people love to hear all of my misery from traveling but um i'm i'm flying to boston and then taking the bus up because that was one of the recommendations so we'll see how yeah. that goes i think that's what we're doing and we're we're adding a few days on the front end so that we can go birding nice <laughs> that was um i think it was joy from bywater she came to town to do a meeting with us and she stopped and did birding bird watching while she was here too. 
I've never been to that part of the country. I've never been to where you are, Avery. So this will be an adventure to be in the Northeast. <laughs> the, first, the closest I got was the trip to Erie. We had a call conference in Erie once and I wound up in the backwoods of New York because they gave away my room. <laughs> so they put me up in a ski lodge called the Peak and Peak. Um, so that was the travel nightmare from that trip. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it was like straight out of the shining. They had the same carpet and everything. <laughs> no. All right. Well, I think it, it sounds like we're at a good stopping point. My, my delirium has reached peak levels. <laughs> so um, we'll call that a wrap for this month. And we'll plan on meeting again next month at the same, same time, same channel, everything. Thanks, guys, for coming. Thank you. Bye. Bye.